Well, this is a companion case to our 25-year-old woman that had an extremely subtle intrameniscal abnormality. Th this is a 39-year-old who does what we do here in Kentucky and Ohio, uh, jumping off the creek. So jumping off the creek bank, uh, this patient sustained an injury. And let's start out with this coronal, heavily water-weighted image. And the first thing you might notice is there's some marrow edema in the posterior lateral tibia. So that might conjure up for you the possibility of a pivot shift injury. We look at the anterior cruciate ligament in the coronal projection and we see that even though it's not transected, it is a little bit swollen. So something happened, there's a little bit of fluid in the joint, and if I demagnify a little bit, you'll see that the MCL has also sustained an injury, but that's not why we're here. We do see the meniscotibial ligament or coronary ligament, the meniscofemoral ligament, part of the deepest layer of the MCL and its capsular component. And then as we go posterior, we stumble on this. Now normally there is signal in the posterior medial meniscus. It's ill-defined in the sagittal projection. It may form somewhat of a Y shape lying on its side as I've shown you multiple times now. And it's no accident that I'm repeating it for your education and educational interest and you see that that Y goes to the capsular surface, not to the articular surface, which is here and here. Things that go up and down like this are much more likely to be tears and substantively related to a traumatic event. However, this individual has this linear signal that's razor thin and well-defined. And the fact that it's very well-defined, I'm not sure I like that very much, so I'm going to swing over to my sagittal water-weighted image and my fat-weighted image. And as I scroll back and forth, I'm on the lateral side, just so you can see what the lateral looks like. There's a, a little faint signal, but it fades in the inner third, and then boom, it's gone. Look at the T1-weighted image. You can see it. I'm going to lighten it up a little bit. It goes to the capsular surface, and then it fades, and it's gone. So one of my criteria for ignoring meniscal signals is should fade in the middle and inner third, certainly by the inner third, should not be as bright as highland cartilage. I don't want to see it go up and down. I don't mind if it goes to the capsular surface. I do mind if it goes to the articular surface. So even though we have a contusion nearby, all is well. Now I'll give you one little special tip here for this case. It's not why I'm showing it, but some of you may remember in earlier vignettes we talked about the menisco capsular attachments laterally. There's the upper one, and there's a lower one, but look at the lower one. The lower one has a little rent in it between it and the meniscus. So the patient has sustained a very tiny diminutive menisco fascicular insult. But let's now move over to the medial side where we see this razor-thin signal. And that razor-thin signal, oh, it translates. No longer is that signal fading in the middle third. No longer is that signal much paler than the adjacent hyaline cartilage. No longer is that signal organized. If I go over to the T1-weighted image and magnify it even further, it's got a little bit of what I would call up and down to it. It goes down a little bit there, then it goes up a little bit, then it goes down a little bit, and then it kind of squiggles its way into the middle third. There's also some swelling nearby. Another criteria that suggests that this is indeed a symptomatic process or a traumatic process or a meniscus tear. So this is our example of a very subtle medial meniscus tear, not as subtle as our 25-year-old woman with the intrameniscal tear, but still subtle, and one that you probably would not see from the inside surface, from the inside out. You might have to go from the outside in to attack it, for never do you see it arborized onto the tibial surface or the femoral surface or into the meniscal tip. And this is a horizontal traumatic tear that's occurred in this individual from her jumping event, and you got the bonus of a meniscal fascicular detachment in the inferior fascicle on the lateral side of the knee. Let's move on.